we're back in the for the next video in the how to achieve five of five hardcore league rewards and I am going to talk to you guys today about arcane spells the most necessary arcane spells that you will want to have if you have an arcane spellcaster during the hardcore league I am on my warlock and we are level 7 all we've already hit level 8 you can see that because this is the hardcore 3 event I got my extra life you get your first extra life when you hit I believe it's rank 36 and so I have two lives to lose um, I only have one quest left in level three I've done everything the last one that I was saving to do with you guys is cobalt assault and I am going to show you how to do cobalt assault on Reaper one in the hardcore league you can do it by yourself because there's a trick to making it slightly easier. Um, we may die in here because it does get a little crazy, but we're going to try. And I'll go over some of the changes in gear. Most everything is the same. I did change this cloak because the cloak that I had was pretty useless. So now I have a 9 Sonic Resist and a natural armor bonus of four. That's still pretty terrible, but it's got my armor class up to 25. I looted this great spell resistance false life belt, so I've got my hit points up to 141, and when I cast any magic, because I am running in Tainted Scholar and have feigned health, I get, with the tier, with three points in there, I get 25 temporary hit points which are fantastic for the Hardcore League. Um, I equipped a Charisma Ring and I replaced the Necklace of Charisma with a Proof Against Poison Necklace. The Corrosion doesn't help me at all because I'm not doing any acid damage, but I wanted that natural poison immunity and I prioritized to get it um, I believe everything else is the same. Yeah, I don't think anything else has changed. Um, I have a a hireling cleric here, level 7. Um, I used him running a couple of quests that had traps. Red Fang uh, was one of them. And it was a good thing that I had him because even with the natural poison immunity and with... Larathor there casting, uh, you know, when I used a few of these neutralized poison potions that give you the magical immunity for 21 seconds, um, and Larathor healing, uh, there were a few poison traps in Red Fang that I hit that took me, uh, I almost died in there, um, which just illustrates that when you're doing the Hardcore League, you don't want to underestimate traps. I know where all the traps are. I've done that quest, Red Fang, a hundred, probably a thousand times, but I still uh, took a bunch of damage. So what's the what's the message that we can take away from that? Besides the fact that I probably suck, um, we can take away from that that in Hardcore League you want to look for groups, and likely you'll come across somebody who is a trapper and can handle the traps, and that is the smartest way. To deal with I also did swiped signet and you can see that at level 7 I took dimension door so I ran and jumped through a bunch of traps in the swiped signet a bunch of acid traps and sonic traps and then once I clicked the lever I dimension doored back to the beginning and went in so I didn't have to jump back over the traps because anytime you go through a trap is a risk you know um, part of understanding life this is a life lesson one of adventure AI's life lessons let's that you guys are going out there into the world can take this with you remember your buddy 
AI tiger here. Um, when you're adventuring in reality, there's two different ways to look at potential problems that you come across in your life. One is a hazard and one is a risk. And understanding the difference between a hazard and a risk will save you so much time and trouble and potential bad things. I mean, it can save your ass. Um, so, what does that mean? Well, a hazard, let's, let's, I'll define what I mean. In Red Fang, we know there are traps. And a hazard it, are those traps in Red Fang. Red Fang is full of hazards. It's full of hazardous monsters. It's full of hazardous traps. It's full of hazardous puzzles. You have to go and click a lever and then click a lever. We know this. We can avoid the hazards of those by avoiding going into Red Fang. My character Platinum can safely sit at home aware of the hazards but avoiding them all because she won't have to encounter them unless I go into the quest. And then what happens is once I go into the quest, I enter Red Fang, and those hazards magically transform into risks. So the first hallway, there's a trap in Red Fang. I believe it's a fire trap. And there's a bunch of spiders and a bunch of spider eggs that if you step on them, they poison you. Well, those are all risks. I have to jump the, the fire. Why is it uh, uh, considered a risk instead of a hazard? Well, because it's directly a risk to me at that point. It's a hazard sort of when it's not directly in my field of view. But now that I'm confronted with it, it is a risk. And if I enter it, I risk the, the fire trap, for example, I risk taking a bunch of damage and I got clipped by one of those traps and I risked dying uh, because of that. So, you know, understand if, if I'm standing there looking at the trap, it's still a hazard. But the minute I start to interact with it, I jump over it. I try to tumble through it. I try to throw resist on myself and... Um, you know, anytime I'm coming into contact with it, then that's the risk. Same thing with the spider. A spider from far away is a hazard. The spider that's trying to bite you and poison you is the risk. So part of the reason I'm making these videos is to identify the hazards and the risks of the Hardcore League and help you mitigate as many of the hazards. Get them right out of the... so you're not even worrying about the hazard because you are immune to it for example and then the risks we're going to deal with together so in this quest here our adventure continues we are going to uh, go into kobold assault where the hazard is kobolds are very angry and they are waylaying this fort that is in zendrick uh, far to the south of stormreach this this guy here, Guard Crichton, will transport us to uh, the outpost. And once we are there, we run lots, there's lots of hazards. We're, we have the hazards of the angry kobolds, we have the, ang the angry um, casters casting spells that are hazardous to our health. Um, but once we start combat, we are going to be engaged with them, and then we are at severe risk of dying to any number of things. A, a club on the back of the head from a kobold, a lightning bolt to the face. And so I am going to use every advantage that I can for this fight, and this is what I recommend to you on a live server. Running without hirelings will make you a better player, but on the Hardcore League, you want every advantage that you can get, and having somebody else there to distract the little crazed kobolds will help. So I'm going to use my Larathor, and I'm also going to use the Feywild Muse. Now I realize not everybody's going to have this, and I said that I was going to make this and do it in a way that... Um, anybody could do it even if you didn't own the content. So what we're going to say is that this Feywild Muse 
because this is the after party, I can't group with anybody. I don't think that there's even anybody. Oh, actually, there's quite a few people online today. Um, which is a surprise considering, but there's no LFMs. I'm not sure if anybody, I think I might be one of the only people questing. So what I mean is rather than use this on, on a live event, um, we would find a party and we would have real people in there, but this is going to be our digital buddy for the day. So we're going to have two digital. If I had my Illyri, my, my gold seal cleric, I would use her as well. So we're going, I told you guys that I probably wasn't going to do Reaper, but I decided that because I want to show you guys how to do this on Reaper, there is a strategy to doing this. I have an extra life if everything goes really bad, but hopefully it doesn't. So I want to put these guys on aggressive. Um, I can have the bard sing a song. And I will have the bard throw blur. Now I have blur. I can blur, but I'm going to let him do it. Um, and what we're going to do, the strategy is we're going to hang out back here. We're not going to go outside. We are going to let everything come to us. Now, I cannot just stand here because there will be a lot of angry kobolds. And the hazard of them killing me would turn into a great risk if I just stood here and let them throw lightning bolts at me. I would risk dying very quickly. So what we are going to do is utilize the environment, this tree, and this wall here, and this depressed ground here, although this goes away and monsters come in through there. But we are going to utilize this entire field, and we're going to try to kill everything right here. That's our kill zone. As a warlock, I do AoE damage, so... Uh, in, in the cone, which is one of the reasons that I like it. And it has a much farther range than it shows. So you can see I start hitting things pretty quickly. Um, now I'm using the tree to keep myself out of the line of sight of the lightning bolting shamans. And now that I see them, I'm going to do my little jump strafe. Remember, we can jump strafe, we can circle box, um, we can LOS, we can use all of the landscape to our advantage, and I have the hirelings on, on aggressive, and so what they'll do is they will run and attack any monsters that arrive. Which is great, because they, they will grab aggro first. However, I don't want them to run out there. So what I will do is pull them back here to this spot. Because I want everybody in this fort. I don't want anybody outside the fort. And why is that? Well, we are taking advantage of the fact that the all of these monsters are coming at us from the woods, and that includes uh, any reapers that spawn are out in the woods there. So what we want to do is stay in the fort as far back as we can and avoid attracting the attention not only of kobolds that hang out out in the woods, because some of them will, but also any reapers that spawn. Um, will stay out in the woods unless we run out and let them know that we're here uh, they won't come back here to find us so there's no reason to leave this safe area and you can see I am not for one second standing still they really want to lightning bolt me but I'm not going to give them the chance uh, you could also see how far the cone attack goes um, not quite that far, but I have to pull him back in, otherwise he's going to aggro some things that are 
in the woods, and that's what I don't want. We're utilizing the environment. We're dra dragging them into our kill zone. You know, we're not letting them get to set up the rules of engagement for this. We're pulling them in, and we are gunning them down. Now, I have full mana, so I will save that lost soul. Um, if a, a, one of my casters could utilize that, they're NPCs, so they can't, but um, I would urge them to take it. Uh, you know, and this is a tough fight. That's a champion. I got distracted trying to loot. Hopefully I can loot it this time. Uh, you probably want to wait until the end to loot. It's always smart. But, you know, I'm not always smart. Despite me giving advice and making videos, I'm not. I do some really stupid things. Like trying to loot chests during a a reaper invasion of angry kobolds. And so why why am I doing this sort of maneuver? Well, I'm strafing to throw some damage at them and then using the walls as an LOS. And this is very basic MMO. If you've played M any other MMO, you've probably done an LOS strategy. Uh, it's especially a uh, popular if you PvP. PvPers LOS all the time. And, you know, as a matter of fact, if you are good at PvPing in another game, you probably will be good at DDO because of the physics that DDO uses for its combat. Um, if you imagine that those little shaman are controlled by other players and they are trying to kill you, uh, you know, it's the same sort of a strategy. You want to sort of fake them out and use whatever advantage you can. Uh, the only thing you can't do to these little kobold guys that you could do to a real player is go troll. You know, go troll the, the, the forums and call them a newbie. But we can call the kobolds a newbie right here, right now. Right? You little newbies, you think you're going to get in here and hurt me? Oh, no, you don't. Maybe this champion wants to, but he's not going to get a chance. Going to watch out for the shaman who throws lightning bolts. You know, and especially scary are if you see a champion caster, you have to be really careful because if they have, you know, we could... Uh, we could highlight the kobold like I just did and see what their bonus is. Some of them have bonuses to damage. Now I have to pull these guys back in the fort so they don't run outside. But you know what I'm talking about. It's a little challenging for me to try to do that right now when I'm strafing and constantly moving but if you if you examine a monster and you look at the buffs and debuffs it has on itself you can see if it has a a, a damage boost for um you know whether it's melee ranged or magical and some of the casters will get you know very very intense uh boosts to their their damage and their lightning bolts can hit really, really hard. And one shot you basically, I mean, I only have, you know, even with my fake hit points, you know, just under 170 hit points. Well, I could get lightning bolted by a champ caster for 200. I mean, that would, that would pretty much kill me, especially considering that you know, on Reaper 1, I'm suffering a deficit of healing, damage, and the monsters are, are have a bonus. You know, they have a slight bonus to their their damage, and they take less damage from me. So we need to be very careful. 
Now, you may run across people on the Hardcore League who have di a different method to do this. I know that you can leave the fort and go around the side. Uh, I know a lot of people do that for the one where you guard the colonel or whatever the lieutenant, whoever it is, um, when it's all hobgoblins. A, a group of hobgoblins tries to raid the same fort. Uh, and so that strategy is a little bit different than this fight. That fight, you want to take the colonel, or I think it's a colonel, or the corporal, the NPC, and you want to take her around the side of the building over here, but on the outside. So I would run through the door, around the outside, and, there, and there's a, a wooded area. You kind of hang around and wait for the fight. You can invis yourself, you can invis everybody, and you kind of wait for the quest. It's like a 10 minute wait. You wait for the arrival of the ogre, who is the leader, and once you see the ogre, you can run out and start killing everything and kill the ogre, and then you should finish the quest. pretty easily. Otherwise, you just have to fight wave after wave of angry hobgoblins, and that is risky. So, you know, you, you keep the hobgoblins as a hazard by hiding around the side. If, if you were to run and fight them all, then you're, you're at risk of dying to, you know, whatever hundred angry hobgoblins that spawn. And it's a, it's a nasty fight. It, you know, people will try to join that quest, I think it's Gateway Defense it's called or something, and they will try to join that quest and they'll join it late and they'll you'll tell them don't join until we tell you to join because you're in there looking for the ogre and they'll say oh okay and then they forget, they click into the quest and now they're in the middle, they zone in here and they're in the middle of a quest that's filled with angry hobgoblins and they die. That, that happened a couple of times during the, uh, the last hardcore season. The people died not listening to the quest leader who said when they joined, please don't enter until I tell you to enter. So that is just more data in the column of listen to the quest leader. Don't assume because you've run the quest a thousand times on your home server that you know what's going on. Uh, you know that you can just run in there and and you're you're a baller you can kill everything yourself I mean you know if if that quest is underway for a few minutes there are a lot a lot of uh, hobgoblins just like this quest you know somebody were to zone in right now they would zone into the middle of a fight and if they weren't ready to move and jump around then you know they might take a lightning bolt. Now we're doing pretty well at controlling the waves. Uh, the NPCs are serving their function. They're cross healing each other. It's one of the great things about having two clerics out in a quest like this that they will cross heal. You know it's the same thing if you had two real clerics or two you know a he two real healers in your group. Um, the healers you know they watch each other's backs. And so this is the end. Uh, we did it. Here's the chief. There is uh, Cobalt Assault on Reaper. We can pick up all of this, the goodies, but we want to make sure that we don't run out into the woods and aggro the 19 Reapers that are out there, because they're out there. Um, I can see pretty far away. You can see there's a Carnage Reaper right there. So, but you know, we're, we're invisible to him because he is hanging out there. At some point, SSG will probably fix that and have the, you know, the pathing for the Reapers where they go to the, the outpost. But for now, 
you know, if they don't change that by the time the next Hardcore League launches, well, then the strategy will work. Even if they did come, it's better to be in the fort. You know, even if the Reapers were coming, because we can see them coming in, we can target them, nuke them down, uh, you know. So it's a good strategy, even if, even if the Reapers behave differently. I'll take the most expensive thing and sell it. Just going to sell all this stuff. And these are good boots. Level five, dodge three, strength three. I'm going to save those. In case I need a strength item, I probably won't, but it does help to have a strength even if you're on a non-melee build just because you can carry more. So I'll double check, but that was my last level three quest, which means now that I can take level eight because the difference you can be is four levels and then at eight I work on my level four quest, which I've already done one or two of them. Um, when I level up according to my build, I'm do I did charisma because I wanted my DCs high. Uh, even though once you're doing legendary Reaper, uh, Reaper fours, uh, it really doesn't matter. So you also could do constitution, but I'm sticking to the build that I did. Still going with bluff because I want my allure skills high and I get to pick a spell and so that's what we're going to talk about next what are the best arcane spells that you can get that you have a, the you know to have in your arsenal of spells if you have access to arcane spells well I can look here and we've talked about a few effects I talked about protection from energy and how important that is because it grants a temporary immunity. It is a tier one immunity, meaning that nothing bypasses it. The only problem is that you can see if you read the description that it is a 12 points of energy per level and it has a maximum. And so, you know, it doesn't last very long. If you were to put it on you and jump into lava, say, if you put protection from fire, you take so much fire damage that it that is absorbed, but it's like temporary hit points versus whatever element it is. So it's certainly useful to take it. However, uh, there are a few other spells in this list that I think are very important to take. One of them is invisibility. Invisibility is extremely useful. I just talked about a strategy for doing the other uh, quest, the uh, gate, the gate quest that's in the marketplace where the hobgoblins invade instead of the kobolds. You take the corporal around the side and you cast invis. So it's great to have a means to cast invisibility. Um, but you can buy cheap invisibility scrolls and if you have any sort of a decent UMD, you can use them. You can see I have no fail on these invisibility scrolls and they last for three minutes. So. Since my resources are low and I don't have the millions of platinum that I have on my home server, I if if this if I couldn't afford to buy these, I might really consider taking it, but I do have platinum enough to buy. So I'm going to continue to look at the list for something else. And we come to what I think is one of the essential spells that you want to have, and that is Sleet Storm. Uh, the reason why is because cause Sleet Storm is a no-fail. Uh, once you put it up, any monsters that go into it are blinded and slowed. And they have a chance of falling down and completely stopping. So it is very useful. The problem with it is that you don't want to throw it ar around willy-nilly because any 
player character or friendly NPC that you have that goes into the sphere of effect also is affected by this with no saving throw. So um, you want to make sure that you have freedom of movement before you cast it because freedom of movement will negate the effect and allow you to move through it freely and still see what you're doing. Um, it's great. Now, there are items in the game that have freedom of movement on them. Low-level items. I know there's a set of boots in Ravenloft. I will go farm for those. So what that means is that I am going to take Sleet Storm because Sleet Storm is one of the best sort of crowd control spells that you can take if you're getting rushed. You throw that up. As long as you have freedom of movement, people in your party have freedom of movement, any monster entering it, it's a great spell to use in uh, the spell the in the harbor, the devil uh, invasion quest. You just throw a bunch of sleet storms at the gate, at the portals, or right in the middle, and everything rushes into the sleet storm and then gets confused, blinded, some of them tri slip and fall down. Uh, so it's a very helpful, useful spell, much more useful than the temporary protection of hit points and the invisibility. If we were to talk about some of the other spells, well, summon monster, I can get scrolls. I don't need water breathing because I made the ring. I have a water breathing ring. Suggestion is a charm, and charm it will work well, but it doesn't last that long. And if you're in a group, most groups will not want you to just randomly charm monsters. You can throw charms on reapers, but usually you would be in a group with a group leader or have a have a plan when and why you're going to charm a certain monster. Most people in DDO don't randomly run around charming things because, you know, now you have a little pink hat uh, monster with a pet on it that follows you around and they will fight for you. It is helpful, but you have no control over when it will make it save and that will break and then that means that you have another enemy there. And most of the monsters that you're going to run into on elite content, you can kill pretty quickly. Like I said, there are certain circumstances where you do want to have the access to a charm, but it's not often. And so I wouldn't recommend that, especially for a warlock that I only get to pick two spells for each level. If you were on a wizard, you could slot because wizards have access to a lot of slots, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it on a sorcerer. People do like Command Undead, but I would rather just kill the undead than charm them. That's yet another charm. Dispel Magic is a very useful spell to, to have. Um, you can cast it on, tra on magical traps, and it will reduce their CR level. And eventually, if you reduce the CR level of the trap to zero you can dispel the, the magical trap. Um, the problem about it is is it costs a lot of mana to do that, it's slow, and dispel magic isn't really that useful for other things. I mean, you could cast dispel magic on a monster to try to remove, if it had blurred itself, you could try to remove the blur from it. Some monsters are blurred. I think fey champions are blurred I don't think you can dispel that though. The point is, at this level, uh, at this level, Sleet Storm, Invisibility, or Protection from Energy will be way more useful. Fog Cloud is nice because it gives a 20% concealment. However, I don't need to throw up a Fog Cloud to get 20% concealment because I have the ability to cast Blur, and Blur gives me at the 20% concealment that I take with me. I'm, I am running around blurred. So uh, it's a better spell than putting up a bunch of fog clouds in a room. Um, Ghoul Touch, eh, it's not really implemented in DDO as well as it could be. It paralyzes one living. You have to run up and physically touch it, which, which in DDO, a touch the range of a touch spell is within four feet so you'd have to be you know if if I were going to touch spell this 
I don't have to be like right here. I just have to be kind of like right about there. That's about touch distance um, in DDO. And so, you know, but that's still too close for comfort just to paralyze a monster. And then, you know, they make their saving throw and you got really close to the monster for nothing at that point. So I would recommend against that. I don't ever use that spell. I think it's a waste. Ray of Exhaustion, the way it's implemented is a waste because monsters that you want, like ogres and giants, things that you would want to exhaust and weaken their strength and their dexterity, they have so much strength and dexterity that minus six doesn't matter. If that Ray of Exhaustion brought them from their 40 strength down to six strength, well, then that would be fantastic. That might actually be useful, but that's not how it works. Now, the way it's implemented is useless. Uh, scare is a good spell to cast fear. Uh, the problem with fear in DDO is that what, what fear does is anything that's afraid of you will, bolt, will turn around and bolt and run. And a lot of groups don't want to chase monsters, you know, all over the dungeon because you cast fear on it. So most people don't take scare. I know guys who solo on wizards use it because if they're getting swarmed, they throw scare and then things scatter. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it on a warlock and it would only be very situational to use it. Um, silence, the, the idea is great. You can silence an enemy spellcaster, but um, it doesn't work on bosses. I don't know if it works on champions. It might. Um, but usually, though, something that would slow them and knock them down would be better than just silencing them or just killing them outright. You know, I think it's just... Uh, I don't use silence creature, and nor would I see myself ever using it. But maybe somebody out there does. So I took Sleet Storm. And I have one action point to spend. I am going all up in the Tainted Scholar tree. I have enough to get this extra packed damage, which I am going to take. And so I have the list here of spells. We'll go over them. I won't spend too much time on the spells that I don't like. But I will tell you about why I like certain spells and why I think they are super important to take. Um, we've already talked about shield and night shield. Shield and night shield. This is the first entry in our list of arcane scrolls that are es essential. Shield and night shield. Um, absolutely 100%. You get one of these. Use it. Permanent, if you can get it, is even better because it makes you immune to magic missile. Uh, shield itself gives you a shield bonus to your armor class. Night shield gives you a plus one or higher, depending on your level. Resistance save, bonus to saves. Now, that would not stack, for example, with... Another resistance bonus, which I have here. You can see on my hat, the plus two resistance is a passive resistance bonus to saving throws. So Night Shield would not stack with that, but Night Shield would give me immunity to Magic Missile. So I tend to favor Shield over Night Shield just because of the armor class bonus that you get from Shield. Um, the next Im very important spell that I recommend everybody take and use ar who has arcane is protection from evil protection from evil is is a fantastic underrated spell it, what it does is it creates a magical barrier around you um, it wards you with a deflection bonus to your armor class deflection bonus is uh, the same as like protection 
So it won't stack. It, it's You don't take it for the armor class bonus. And it's only versus evil that it gives you an armor class bonus. But um, it g also gives you a plus two on your saves versus evil monsters. But the, but that these aren't the reasons to take it. The reason to take it is because it makes you immune, a tier one gold standard immune from evil magical controls and compulsions well what are those well if an enemy caster an evil enemy caster tries to cast on you command you know sit a command is a no is a is a uh, cleric spell and uh, it's one word that can make you do something if you've ever played the pen and paper um, in DDO command is implemented as a sit down so or fall down so you if you're commanded you will lay down and you can't get up uh, until the spell is over it it's awful to be commanded because like hold you're on the ground you're prone and other monsters can beat you up while you're down there you can die pretty easily if you're commanded so protection from evil will protect you from those sorts of compulsions now we could Google, let's see if I can Google the, and see if there is a list of the, the immunity. Okay, it, yeah, so if I look at it on the wiki, DDO wiki, uh, it says that provides complete immunity to spells such as dominate person, dominate monster, command, greater command and that is regardless of the caster's alignment so if you go and fight uh, any spell caster who's going to try to uh, dominate you charm you command you greater command which is even a worse version of command because that lasts for a, like a minute um, then this is why you want protection from evil it's gold standard spell don't skip it get it use it uh, so going through the list like I said uh, we could talk about every spell but I'm not going to talk about spells that I don't think are important uh, the next spell that I think is very useful in this list to have is Sonic Blast if you're an arcane spellcaster and you might say to me well I'm not Sonic I, I'm a fire stork or I'm a I'm a necro wizard I why would I need Sonic Blast the reason to get Sonic Blast is because it is a decent low-level ranged ray spell and once the ray hits its target it explodes in a sonic blast and it has a radius that is significant it's the same radius as a fireball of sonic damage the damage is not very high but you can use it to break boxes from far away you can use it to target mobs and hit them from far away and though it doesn't do a lot of damage there is a small chance if the monster fails a will save that it will be dazed for I think it's one second, one or two seconds of a daze. And the daze, you'll see the little sort of like white stars going around the monster's head, means that it will just stand there and not do anything because it's dazed. Well, if you open the, a door and there's a bunch of hobgoblins there, let's say there's six hobgoblins and you throw a sonic blast in and it, you daze three of them, well, that's three of them who lose their I'm going to say initiative, but you get my point, even though initiative isn't in TDO. Um, that gives you only three to worry about immediately, and it gives you a chance to reassess what you're going to do. And also, it's AoE. Like, that sonic blast, once it explodes, like I said, it's like a sonic fireball. Uh, it's sonic damage. It will, you know, there's a radius, and all six of those hobgoblins would take a low a low amount of sonic damage unfortunately even if you are a, an 
a lightning sork who gets bonuses to, to sonic damage and you blast your sonic damage way up um, the damage on sonic blast caps so you really can never use it as like a full-on uh, damage spell but it's extremely helpful in the low in the early game for breaking boxes stunning monsters matter of fact it allows low level casters to have some sort of crowd control because you can do the daze effect on different monsters and then you know you could run up and hit them with your burning hands or whatever it is that you're going to do damage with um, the next spell that I think is essential for everybody on the hardcore league who has access to arcane magic um, wants to think about slotting or having access to in some way shape or form is uh, Expedious Retreat. Expedious Retreat gives you a run speed of 25. Run speed in DDO is extremely important because you can kite monsters. The faster you move, the safer you are keeping monsters at a distance. It also will allow you to explore and adventure faster. And it's just a overall very useful um, later on once you find uh, objects that you can wear that have speed greater than 25 you could unslot the spell but if you have the ability to take this spell you want it you want to get it as a matter of fact on platinum it was the first spell that I took you know right away at level one I want to be able to run around at 25 um, the next spell that we'll talk about that I think is super necessary is jump. Now jump is one of those abilities in DDO you also have as a skill. And your jump skill is based on your strength. So if you have a really high strength your jump is going to be uh, pretty high. Jump caps at 40 so you can see I have a two and if I jump it's not very high at all you can see if we use this dock worker as a as a sort of a where am I jumping to I'm just about jumping over like my feet are sort of where his head is which means that with a two jump I can pretty much jump about my height. Uh, that might seem like that's great. If you could do that in real life, I mean, that would be super. I mean, that allows me to jump things like that. That would allow me to jump, you know, something like this. But in dungeons, when you're adventuring, when you're questing, uh, sometimes there are jump puzzles. There are, you know, like um, Super Mario Brothers style jumping uh, puzzles that you have to get from one place to another and you want your jump as high as you can get it because it will make it much easier to do those sort of jump quests now it's not so bad um, you know if you're not good at the Mario style jumping it doesn't mean that you can't play DDO um, because there are other solutions usually and you know, if you're in a party, there's always going to be somebody who's great at jumping. But, you know, with jump, my jump now goes to 22, which is, ha you know, a little more than half. The cap is 40. Now I'm at half, which means I can jump significantly higher now than I could. You can see I'm, I'm getting way over. We were using the dock worker. I'm getting sort of way over his head now where where are my feet going now my feet are almost going up to here which is you know significantly higher uh, than it was and so that would allow me you know to be able to jump up on some much harder to get to places so you want to get your jump as high as you can and one of the other things you'll notice is if you take a running start and jump your jump 
will be a lot higher and further than if you just do a jump standing still. So running and jumping. Um, the next we've talked about is resist energy. The minute you can get resist energy, it's a uh, spell that you want to get. I haven't had the chance to select it yet, but I, I, I won't on this character because my enhancements, I get to take resist energy as a warlock. It is in the tainted, uh, in the enlightened spirit resist energies. And when I cast this, it puts all five of the resists on me. But if I didn't have access to this spell, I would have here, I would have the resist energies here. I would break them out and then I would have acid, cold, lightning, fire, and sonic. And that way I could target myself and cast whatever element I needed protection from because you can see it's no joke. I have a, I'm standing now at 25 resist versus all of those. And for level eight content, that's pretty good. That means that I can jump into lava, I can take acid hits, uh, I could fight a frost method and, you know, not take super damage from their ice. Uh, although if they do, there are things that ice methods and ice flinchers can do that do a lot of damage. But And then 25 lightning, you know, that's not going to save me from a 200 point lightning bolt from a kobold shaman, but... 25 is, you know, a good start. Um, the next spell... ...that I think is super important to take is Scorch. Scorch is a level 2 fire spell, and the reason that you take that, if you're on a arcane caster, is because it has a very far range and it's AOE fire damage and it will allow you to kill a lot of non-fire based monsters pretty quick. Um, it's very effective. So I know some people who take Scorching Ray. Scorching Ray though is a single target. It's a ray so it shoots very far away and you can use Scorching Ray to hit targets very far um, to snipe them, but for overall, what I think is necessary, if you're a caster, Scorch uh, outstrips Scorching Ray by a thousand. Scorch is, you know, you open a door, there's ten kobolds on the other side, you throw Scorch, and that's going to hit them all. And it might not kill them all, but you've just damaged ten monsters. You know, uh, DDO is the game where you want as many AOE spells as you can because it will make your life a lot easier. The higher up in content you go, the more likely you are to come across monsters that are grouped up and there's just more of them. Uh, you know, in the early quest, you get one kobold walking down a hallway, two kobolds walking down a hallway. In later mid level content, you open a door like in Temple of Elemental Evil, for example, and there's 20 uh, orcs standing there or whatever it is. So having an AoE spell is great. Scorch is fantastic. The next is Blur. Blur, I took, I use it. Super important, 20% concealment. No questions asked, just take it. Take it so you can cast it on your buddies Take it so you can cast it on yourself. Even if you have an item that has blur, unless you are a diehard solo player, having blur that you can throw on somebody is just a nice thing to do. It's nice at the beginning of a quest, rather than just running into the dungeon and starting to, to beat up everything by yourself, hang out at the entrance and get buffs and give buffs. You know, and if you have the ability to give people blur, give them blur because it will keep them alive. Uh, the next that I think is super a must-have is 
the upgraded version of Protection from Evil, which is Magic cir Circle Against Evil. Well, why is this necessary? We already have Protection from Evil. Isn't it enough? I don't cast both of them. No. Once you have the ability to get Magic Circle Against Evil, you can get rid of Protection from Evil. And just throw Magic Circle as the buff because it will affect you and everybody in your party that's in the radius. And the reason you want to do that is because it is a group buff that will save everyone who gets it from being commanded, from being um, dominated, from being uh, greater commanded, you know, all the things that we went over. It makes them immune. And so you will greatly increase, unless you're running with all Warforged, you know, who are immune, I think. Uh, although, I'm not sure. Somebody may let me know. Uh, can Warforged be commanded? Um, you know, they're immune to most uh, paralysis effects and hold. But h how is command? I'm not sure. Um, but, so there you go. Magic Circle against evil. Absolutely necessary. We talked about protection from energy. Uh, why I think that's necessary. You want to take that. You can also wait and take the protection from elements, which is the spell that puts all of the protection on you. So you cast one and it hits you with all five. But you want some version of that protection. There's also one that does an AoE and puts it on everyone. You you know, ideally that's the one you want because you'll throw it on everyone, but take whichever one you can uh, fit into your build. We talked about Sleet Storm and the importance of it, how it is a no-save blindness, a no-save uh, can slow them and knock them down and just give you time. It's a, probably the best crowd control spell in the game. The downside of it is if your party doesn't have uh, freedom of movement, then they will hate you because they are also going to be blinded and knocked down. So you don't want to you know, you want to make sure that you use it tactically, but it's an essential spell. Um, another spell that is super important that I think everybody should have if you're an arcane caster is rage. Rage is one of those spells that, um, while it might seem sort of goofy, uh, you know, if you're not a melee, if you're just a caster, uh, to take it, but it gives you hit points. You can see now, I'm a, I am was at 151, now I'm at 159. Uh, that's free hit points. Anything in the hardcore league that gives you free hit points, you want to take it. You know, so rage, necessary. Necessary spell. Take it, throw it, it's an AoE. It will give everyone in the party hit points. Uh, the next spell that I think is absolutely necessary are it's two spells you want to swap out for the higher level once you get the first one uh, once you get it uh, is heroism or greater heroism heroism um, is a single target buff that gives you a plus two morale bonus to your attack rolls your saving throws and all of your skill checks so if you're a rogue trying to pick a trap, you want to have heroism on you because your trap picking is going to be better. Uh, on a just you as a caster, your jump is going to be better. Uh, all of your skill points will be, you know, too higher. And then later on, you get access to greater heroism. You want to swap out heroism and take greater because instead of plus two, it becomes plus four. And greater heroism also gives uh, bonus temporary hit points and a uh, immunity to fear for as long as the greater heroism is on. So if you have one person who hasn't seen my videos, doesn't know the importance of getting a fear immunity as fast as possible, um, and they are running around susceptible to fear, then giving them greater heroism would make them immune for as long as they had the spell. As long as it didn't get dispelled. Uh, the next level, uh, the next spell that I think is an absolute must for you to have is Fireball. Uh, for obvious reasons, you say, yeah, that's a no-brainer. 
Why, why even tell us that? Well, in DDO, fireballs also work great for opening doors. They work great for breaking boxes. They work great for AOE damage. They just, it's a really good sort of, uh, if you have the ability to chuck a lot of spells, um, it's a, a very useful. You could use Sonic Blast and not pick up Fireball if you're not going towards fire at all, but it's very good DPS if you have any sort of fire spell power, and it's super useful. Oh, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to open a door with a fireball? Isn't that everybody's fantasy? Haven't we all thought about doing that in real life? So now you get to do it in DDO. <laughs> you can just blast the door down. It's like Star Wars when they have the Princess Leia's ship at the beginning and the stormtroopers, you know, they blow the door off. It's like that. Only they didn't have a fireball, but uh, the next spell is Displacement. Displacement is an upgrade from Blur, but you want to have both. Blur lasts one minute per level. Displacement lasts much, much shorter. It's not a long duration spell. However, you put it on yourself at the start of combat, and it only you can only cast it on yourself, but it is a 50% concealment. That means one out of two attacks will miss. And, I mean, that's great. That means half of you is concealed in some misty cloud. And, you know, that's just, it's necessary. Especially for Reaper questing, displacement, you want it. Get it as soon as you can. Now, I said get it as soon as you can, but that's with an asterisk. Because you can see, displacement is a level three spell and I did not take it. I took Dimension Door. Dimension Door for uh, Wizards and Sorcerers, I believe, is level 4. But for Warlocks, it's level 3. The progression for spells is a little different. Um, Dimension Door is one of those spells, especially for Hardcore League, but it's just the way the DDO implemented it. It is an absolute must-have. Uh, you want it, don't skip it, get it. The first spell you get, when you can get it, that's the first spell that you get. And as soon as you see Dimension Door, take it. Don't even think about it. It's a no-brainer. You need to have it. it. What it allows you to do is recall, you go through the door, and you go back to the beginning of the quest. That is super useful for thousands of reasons. We won't cover all those reasons here, but... It is just so helpful to save time, to make quests easier, to save lives, to, you know, just get out of nasty situations. Um, and it's also very essential for completing some very hard quests. Uh, you can make them much easier if you have Dimension Door. So don't even think about it. Get it. And then the next spell, if, if you're going like me, the next level three spell I take is going to be Displacement. Um, because I know the value of the Dimension Door. Uh, the next spell in our list is Haste. Haste, you want to take Haste. As soon as you can get Haste. Haste is great. Haste negates slow. Haste speeds everybody up. Haste helps you get to the party faster. Haste gives you a 32% enhancement bonus to your run speed. All your attacks... 15% uh, bonus to attack speed. In addition, you also get a plus one to your attack rolls and a plus one dodge bonus to your armor class and also a plus one to your reflex saving throws. Haste is one of those things where if you can take it and extend it and keep it on your party, you will help them survive. Um, have haste on yourself as much as you can. It doesn't make sense to have it all the time because it can get expensive, but having haste is just one of those things. You'll see groups that are really tight and they do quests really well together. Uh, there's always somebody hasting everybody, making sure that everyone has haste. Uh, the next spell that I think is essential for the Hardcore League is Stone Skin. And we can go 
and I will do this because I am at the level now where I can do this and we will get some stone skin wands now why is stone skin so important well stone skin is an essential spell because it gives you a stacking damage uh, what they call damage reduction in TDO of 10 slash adamantine what that means is any damage that comes at you if it's not coming at you from a source that has adamantine properties um, you will right off the top ignore the first 10 points of that damage and that's not that much I mean at low level when a kobold is swinging a sword at you and let's say he hit you for 11 damage the stone skin would soak up 10 and you would take one point but by the time you get up higher and monsters are hitting you for a hundred points of whack you're you're soaking up 10 taking 90 but it reduces so it is a tier 2 defense because it's a statistic you know you you want as many of the tier 2's as you can get so it re will reduce the damage that you take and it lasts you will have a little buff you know until a certain amount are absorbed it will last and so you can buy anybody can go buy stone skin wands they are for sale in the 12 um, if you don't have access to the spell or if you didn't want to take the spell you want to save your spell slots for other spells that you think are more important let's say dps or other defensives if you don't have it so you come over here to the 12 the tower of the 12 and this here's another trick too i forgot to show you guys this on day one if you come in here and you talk to gene sell me here uh he will give you a small ingredients bag just he'll just give it to you so you could I at the beginning I talked to the person in the harbor and got the tiny ingredients bag but now I'm going to get rid of the tiny and use the small but you could as soon as you make your character in Corthos run over here and talk to this guy I'm pretty sure he gives it to anybody um, I don't think that there's a, a reason that he needs to to give that to you I'm pretty sure he just gives it to you and so this guy, Palomic, will sell you magical items. And he or she, it's a he, uh, will sell you wands of stone skin. Uh, they are, you know, you need to have a, a bit of platinum. Right now I have 32,000, so I'm going to buy one. And I will keep it for when I... need to have extra defenses you know if I go up against uh, a champion or if I know I'm going to be in a in a big boss fight and so I will go to the bank now and swap out these bags and continue to talk to you about um, the spells The next spell in the list that you absolutely want is called Fire Shield. Fire Shield is one of those spells and I can actually go, and I think I will, buy some scrolls because you want to do that as soon as you can. If you have access to buy Fire Shield scrolls, uh, do it. If you have the ability to take the spell, do it because it is extremely useful what it does is it puts a shield around you you will see it'll either be a blue flame or a red flame and it, it what it does is the fire version of the spell reduces all damage you take from cold by half and the cold version of the spell reduces all damage you take from fire by half now that's huge because if you are let's say swimming in lava and you're going to take a hundred damage uh, that will make you take only 50 damage so it is an extremely useful spell to keep you alive versus fire or cold 
and it's so useful that you want to have it you want to carry scrolls if you can afford them uh, you want to get a few I can get them I'm not sure if it's this divine vendor no see I sometimes I forget the divine don't have access to fire shields I don't think um, so here they are they're not that expensive I'm going to buy a stack of I'll just get 22 of them and I will slot them on my bar and how you slot a fire shield scroll to be useful is you open this little spell select because you don't want to do this in combat if you need to cast this on yourself quickly you want to already have it pinned so there's the cold version there's the fire version and now if I'm running around in combat let's say and I know I'm going up against uh, like a fire a fire breathing dragon for example I want the fire shield on me this blue one here that will reduce fire damage by half and you can see like I said it gives you you can tell that you have a fire shield on because you're you've got this blue flame on you if you do the the one that protects you uh, from cold well, that looks like a fire then now, if you can see. I look like I'm covered in flame. And so that is a super essential spell. Some items have that on it already. Uh, the next very useful spell for Hardcore League. Oh, something else that I can buy. Teleport. Uh, everybody's going to know this, but I'm going to go over it anyway. Teleport is something that you want. You don't have to wa waste a spell slot on this. I know I've seen some builds where they'll put teleport or greater teleport into the spell list, but you don't have to waste a slot. You can buy teleport scrolls. Um, they're kind of pricey, so maybe if you don't have a lot of money, I have 28000 left. But the great thing about it is, you know, I don't need a million of them. I just... There, I'm spending... Here, I'll show you. I'm spending almost 2400 and I'm, I'll buy 22 of them. And so now, what I can do is, if I'm in a location that I need to exit quickly, for example, I can cast teleport and it will allow me to select one of these locations. You can do it quickly. You can, you could act, let's say I wanted to make an oh shit button and pin, you know, I have the gatekeepers grow pinned now. And, you know, if I'm in combat and it's going bad, I could, um, you know, when I'm running around, I could, you know, punch that and blam, I'm gone instantly. You see how fast I was out of there? And now I'm here. So it makes a great oh shit button. Um, but now I am in the gatekeeper's grove. Uh, the next spell that is absolutely necessary is Hold Monster. Hold Monster has, has two forms and um, you want to take it if you're on a caster because it will allow you to hold. Uh, you can cast Hold Monster on Reapers if you plan on doing Reaper content. You can cast Hold Monster on Champions. and stop them these really dangerous monsters now some monsters are immune to hold uh, but you want to take that as soon as you can especially mass hold monster mass hold monster is super useful 
Uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw this on the hardcore server. The mortality creature is out in the harbor. There. Um, kind of creepy. Uh, the next spell that you want to take is... Uh, gust of Wind and or Cyclonic Blast. Uh, gust of Wind will allow you to cast it on an enemy cloud or an enemy blade barrier or something like that and or an enemy cloud kill spell and you can blow it away. Uh, keep in mind though that, that that will also, Gust of Wind and Cyclonic Blast will also blow away friendly casts. So if you have a, a caster buddy who just threw up a Sleet Storm and you do a Cyclonic Blast through it, it's going to disperse it and blow it away. Um, so you always want to communicate, but uh, Cyclonic Blast will actually do some good damage. It's slotted as a lightning slash sonic spell but I've noticed that the damage it does I think it's bane damage so it really doesn't scale with any of the spell powers except universal spell power I might be wrong they may have changed that but um, yeah friend or foe it will remove the lingering effect uh, it has a knockdown too uh, cyclonic blast when you throw it at a monster it can knock it down um, so it's a very it's just a very useful spell to have uh, the next spell I'm going to list two of them because they're very similar that I think are absolutely necessary that you want to have are prismatic ray and prismatic spray prismatic ray is a multicolored ray and as a ray it goes very far and the effect that it does is random. Uh, it's a harmful effect, random effect. Um, you can have a ray that dismisses a monster, so it will erase it from the pl prime material plane, forcing it back to its home plane, um, and just take it right out. So uh, the reason why it's so necessary to take this spell is because all of the random effects are usually very beneficial. One ray will turn a monster to stone. Uh, one ray, I think, is fire damage. There's another ray that does, uh, I believe it's fear. Will will put a really solid fear effect on the monster. But if you take prismatic spray and there's 10 monsters coming at you, you may turn one to stone. You may... Uh, dispel or you know um, make two of them just disappear just vanish right off the board so it's just extremely useful for crowd control extremely useful for um, getting rid of with an insta kill effect uh, on a monster um, so I highly recommend taking prismatic ray or pr or prismatic spray or both on your caster um, So, Greater Dispel Magic, Dispel Magic, and Mordenkin's Disjunction are all very useful spells. You want to have one of them. Um, usually, having Greater Dispel Magic is enough. If you can fit it in, Mordenkin's Disjunction is the best. Um, the reason to take that is that will allow you to disable magical traps, uh, remove magical effects, um, you know, if you come across spell wards out in the Forgotten Realms, they're very useful spells to have. So if you didn't have a trapper, but you were questing out in the Forgotten Realms, having greater dispel magic, dispel magic, or more Denkin's Disjunction, which is the level 9 spell, it will allow you to deal with those traps. And I think that they just fixed it, so it does a much better job at removing the traps than it used to. Uh, another spell that I think is extremely useful to take for hardcore league and you should take it you can get it on gear later on so it might be a spell that you swap out later but it's true seeing 
true seeing allows you to see things as they actually are so you can see secret doors although there are many secret doors that even true seeing you need to be a rogue to see the door even with true seeing you wouldn't see it but if you can see it with true seeing you'll see that it allows you to see through blur and displacement any concealment bonus you get to see the true location of the item or monster so it's very useful when you're fighting to have true seeing on if you're fighting a monster that has like I said I think fey champions have blur and then the higher level fey champions would have displacement on them so true seeing would negate that uh, true seeing shows up on a lot of magical items so you could swap it out but you want to take it if you don't have it on a piece of gear We're almost done with the list of spells that I think are absolutely necessary. Uh, the next one is Otto's Sphere of Dancing. You want this spell. Don't skip this spell. You want to get this spell. Um, this spell will allow you to make a little disco ball and it will have a circle and a light that plays music and any monster entering that area will have to make a will save or just start capering and dancing around it is extremely useful crowd control you want to take it if you're in a situation where you need uh, crowd control um, it is a fantastic way to sort of stop monsters in their tracks and dance and you can run them in and out of it and cause them to make their save over and over until they fail and they stop and they dance and that will give you time to do whatever whether it is heal up or come up with a strategy or you know it's just a very useful spell i already talked to you about mass hold monster there is also hold person mass hold person i wouldn't recommend those i won't talk much about them but you want hold monster mass hold monster you can skip the others um, delayed blast fireball is a fantastic upgrade from the regular fireball fireball we've already talked about how fantastic fireball itself is so you want to get delayed blast fireball if you if you have the ability to do fire damage it's a great dps spell and also useful for breaking boxes blowing down doors that sort of thing um, if your build can take finger of death uh, it's worth taking Finger of Death. Now, I'm not going to say if you're on a Druid that you should take it. They're not Arcane Caster, so we're not talking about Divine Magic right now. But I know Druids get access to Finger of Death. But if you're on a Necro Wizard, you're probably headed to Finger of Death anyway. If I were on a Warlock and I were doing Soul Eater, well, the Soul Eater gets an SLA, Finger of Death, you can see uh, right here. And so I would take Finger of Death. That would give me two Finger of Death casts. Um, you want to take it just because even though it's expensive, there are monsters that, you know, I mean, they might make a bad dice roll and fail their save. And then you manage to get rid of them right away. I mean, having a, a, an insta-kill is a very handy, useful thing. Um, I will take Finger of Death on this character because as a as a warlock that's stacking charisma my DCs will be good enough that I could, can land in heroics some fingers of death um, once I get hurl through hell I'll have two I'll hurl I'll hurl and then I will finger in order to insta kill from range and that will help with monsters so you want to take finger if you can fit it in um, it's worth it the next absolutely use most useful spell you want to take as soon as you have access to take it is Otto's irresistible dance it is amazing one target has no save and will dance and you will crowd you will CC it it works on Reapers, 
It works on champions, very scary monsters. You just make them dance like an idiot. A lot of the dances for the monsters are kind of funny. And it gives you a chance to back up and heal, to form a strategy to kill it, especially if it's a, a reaper. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it works on doom reapers, but I think it works on every other kind of reaper. Another fantastic spell that you want to take is Greater Shout. Greater Shout is sonic DPS spell. It goes out in front of you in a cone and it does sonic damage. Even if you don't have sonic damage, the reason to take it is because it does a daze effect on anything that's hit by that sonic damage. So it's yet another way that you can AOE crowd control. So um, while Sonic Blast is low level and sort of becomes less useful as you go higher up, you can replace that with Greater Shout. And Greater Shout, you could uh, do the Daze effect and hit a lot more monsters. Uh, another spell that's extremely useful to have, and I would recommend taking it for the Hardcore League, is Sunburst. Um, Sunburst is not a spell that does a lot of damage. So you would think as a, as a wizard, you take Sunburst, you go out and you throw it on a ghoul, for example, and ghouls are undead. You know, the sun is sort of their antithesis, but you know, it doesn't always do a lot of damage to them. Sunburst has the ability to blind. So it's a great, the great reason to take it is for the blind that it will put on monsters, but also it's light damage. And there are some monsters in DDO that will take light damage, uh, double light damage, and some of them are instantly killed by light damage. I think shadows, for example, are instantly killed if they fail their uh, saving throw. I think it's a reflex saving throw. If they fail that saving throw, they're instantly dead. So it's worth having just to see if in a group of undead or whatever, if you throw that up, uh, you can insta-kill a bunch of the shadows. And then the other thing would be if you were swarmed, let's say you're swarmed by a group of orcs, you throw sunburst up on the group and it has a chance to blind all of them. It may blind half of them. Uh, so it's a good, good way to get monsters crowd controlled a little bit. So I recommend it. Uh, the next most useful spell, I believe, is that you want to take uh, is Meteor Swarm. Meteor Swarm is one of those evocation DPS spells. Uh, if you are expecting to fire damage, this is go going to be one of your go-to spells. Um, but even if you're not, even if you're, let's say you're a necro wizard or an ice sork, an ice sork fire would be the opposite of it. Why would I take meteor swarm on an ice sork? Well, half of the meteor swarm damage is these meteors, which are chunks of rock uh, that hit and they bludgeon. And so it gives you a, what the game would call an untyped bludgeon damage ability so there are some monsters that uh, they're just hard to damage well having the meteor swarm cast allows you to hit them with they may be immune to the fire damage but you can hit them with some bludgeoning damage and it has the range of a ray so you can chuck it really far it has an arc so when you cast it uh just an extremely useful very helpful spell I highly recommend it. Uh, there are a lot of other spells we could talk about, but that pretty much sums up the list of must-haves. Um, Whale of the Banshee is a great spell if you're a DC caster. Um, you'll probably already know that if you're a wizard. Let's say you're a necro wizard and you're working on your DCs. If you can fit it in because it's an AoE insta-kill effect, um, but, you know, there's a lot of other spells that situationally are very handy, but we won't go over that. That's the list. Um, 
probably if I were to name one spell that is sort of the worst spell to take and maybe the best spell to take for your hardcore league, depends on what type of a person you are. If you want to troll your friends and potentially get one of them killed, uh, the grease spell, you throw grease on the ground and your, your buddies will have to make a reflex save or they'll slip and fall. Um, if you do that to them in combat, you could get them killed. So if you want to troll your friends, the best worst spell in DDO is Grease. I don't recommend it, but I figured I'd throw that in there. Uh, so that's it for today's video. We will pick it up. I'll go over the divine must-have spells in the next video. Um, and until then, uh, have a great rest of your day, and I hope adventures go well. Join us for more. I plan to do lore videos for each quest in DDO, as well as the raids. Plus, I will be releasing more Session Zero videos for DDO on topics such as player character races, the religions of Eberron, the Last War, and the Mornlands, the Dragon Marks, the Dragon Marked Houses, and much, much more. Click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below. I like interacting with other players. My main tune in DDO is named Mary. I am on Sarlona. I also have a guild on the Hardcore League. My guild is Death Smile. Please say hi if you're on either of those servers. Uh, subscribe to see more Adventure AI content about DDO, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online, and gaming in general. I also play Star Wars The Old Republic. You can join us at Adventure AI on Discord. Check us out on Twitch. Check us out on Twitter. You can can go to our Patreon and become a patron of the channel where you would get access to all of the scripts, the images, the music, the videos, as well as behind the scenes, and the ability to request topics for me to make uh, future videos. Thanks very much. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope your adventures go well.